Sonata form is probably the most important musical form to understand, because it comes up everywhere, and I mean everywhere. And that's because it's one of the most brilliant ways of developing your musical ideas in a well-rounded and dramatically effective way. It seems to have developed from binary form, and you can start hearing it from the music of Joseph Haydn onwards. So let's go, and I'll presume you've seen my videos on musical seeds and tonality. I'll give you a quick overview of sonata form, and then we'll go into a little more detail with a famous example. Sonata form can be divided into three main parts. First, the exposition, which basically presents or exposes all the main themes, all the main musical material and seeds. This is made up of two groups, which will definitely be in contrasting keys, and may also have contrasting themes, moods or ideas. So that already sets up a kind of conflict, and particularly a conflict of keys, and the exposition is often repeated. Then there's the development, which explores and develops the material we've heard in the exposition. And this is usually more discursive and looser in structure, and will move through many keys. And finally, we get a recapitulation, which literally recaps the exposition, but with a twist. Things are the same in some ways, but in other ways crucially different. For example, the first and second group will return, but now both will be in the home key. And so the tonal conflict from the exposition is resolved. The reason that this model is so good is that it gives great space for a compelling musical argument to be developed. An interesting parallel for sonata form is that of a discussion between two people with different points of view. Take Hegel's dialectic. First, we get our thesis, or statement. This is like our first group of the exposition. And this gives rise to an antithesis, which contradicts or negates the thesis. This is like our second group, which comes in a contrasting key. And then, through much discussion, dissecting and rebuilding, which is our development, we come to a synthesis which resolves the tension between the disagreement. This is like our recapitulation. So, you see, the sonata form is a great model for building dramatically engaging pieces of music. In my opinion, the three most exciting points where composers get the opportunity to blow your mind are the development section, the return from the development into the recapitulation, and the second group of the recapitulation. And you'll find out why through the rest of this video. So, this is the fundamental sonata form structure, though it is often topped and tailed with an introduction and a coda. The introduction is normally at a slower tempo, and its job is to set the mood for the piece, as well as perhaps hint at some of the melodic material. The coda gives a solid sense of finality to the piece, if the recapitulation hasn't already done so. And the coda might also bring closure to any unanswered questions we might still have about the music. So let's look a little closer, and we'll use Mozart's Symphony No. 40 in G minor as an example. First, the exposition, which is divided into two groups in contrasting keys. What's important to understand is that there are no limits to the number of themes or amount of thematic material that may appear in a group. You may be presented with many musical ideas which will come back later, or there may just be one theme per group. The first and second group can even use the same material. Haydn often uses exactly the same theme in his first and second group, though that's in the very early stages of sonata form. But the thing that always divides them is their key. The first group will always be in the home tonic, while the second group will always be in a contrasting key. Typically, if the first group was in a major key, the second group will be in the dominant key. If the first group was minor, the second group will move to the dominant or the relative major, though things get a little more adventurous as we progress through history. These two groups will often have very contrasting themes or moods, though that's not a necessity for sonata form. However, it can definitely make the drama more interesting. These two groups are normally connected together by a transition passage, which allows the music to transition or bridge from one key to the next, and this transitional material might be memorable or interesting in its own right. So, with Mozart's 40th, the first group in G minor gives us this theme. Then the transition gives us this material, and changes key for us. The second group, in B-flat major, gives us this calmer, contrasting, scalic theme.
And finally, the exposition will often end with a codetta. A codetta literally means a small coda, so it offers a sense of finality, but not too much finality. It only wants to close off the section, not the whole piece. And the codetta will firmly close the music in our second key. So here it closes the exposition in B flat major, but Mozart gives us a reminder of the first theme. Often the whole exposition is repeated, and this is the case with this Mozart piece. Some people think the repeat is important because it gives the music the right sense of proportion, others ignore the repeats because they can make the piece go on a bit. Next comes the development, and this is a point of major interest in the piece, where the composer can run free and do crazy and creative things with their ideas. So the point is to develop the material we've already been exposed to. Importantly, it will generally completely avoid going into either of the main keys we heard in the exposition. Instead, it'll probably go through a wide range of keys and be reluctant to settle on any of them. Apart from this, there are no real rules for the development section, and different composers will do things very differently. So in a sense, if the exposition is more clearly structured, the development allows things to be more chaotic and unstructured. One thing you'll generally find is that the themes will be broken up and then rebuilt or recombined to make new phrases or sequences of a different kind. Here's a clip from Mozart's development. Listen to how it's constantly changing key, reluctant to settle in any, and how it's breaking up and rebuilding the material we heard from the exposition. Finally, of course, the development has to bring us back to the home tonic for the start of the recapitulation. So the development section will typically end with an amazing passage of dominant preparation. This moment can often be a high point of tension and climax in the piece, especially with later composers. Mozart uses this dominant preparation to shower us with classical thunder. <laughs> One last note, in a few cases, like Beethoven's Eroica Symphony, the composer might also introduce a new important theme in the development section. I consider this an expansion of sonata form, rather than traditional sonata form, but it does add an extra dimension to the structure. Next comes the recapitulation. The point of this is to recap the two groups of the exposition, at least to some extent. However, there are always surprising twists. Some of these will be subtle, like a change in the way they use their instruments or dynamics or something. However, other changes are more significant. So it's not an exact repeat of the exposition, but more a kind of retelling of it in a slightly different way. The two groups don't have to be stated in their entirety. In fact, it's actually more important to state the second group fully than the first, because the second group's recap will no longer be in its original key, but in the home tonic. So the conflict that was set up in the exposition is in some sense resolved in the recapitulation. There are three points of major interest in the recapitulation, which give license for the composer to do something amazing. First is how the development leads into the recap, which we've already looked at. The second interesting part is the transition. Whereas in the exposition, the transition took us to our new key, now the composer has to rewrite this passage to keep us in the home key. And the composer will often use this as an excuse to do something remarkable. Here's a bit of Mozart's redesigned dramatic transition, which takes the old transition material and runs wild with it. The third interesting part is really the second group and how the composer will alter the second group if he alters it at all. Here Mozart changes the key from B flat major to G minor. It would have been perfectly acceptable to just go to G major, that's allowed in sonata form, but Mozart takes it a step further and makes it minor, which completely changes the character of the theme to something more tragic. So it's a crucial moment in terms of the mood of the piece. The argument has resolved itself into tragedy, not positivity. This has become this.
Finally, there's the coda, which gives a solid ending to the piece. There are many possibilities, and the objective is to wrap up the movement and give it a sense of finality, ending in the home key. Mozart keeps it fairly simple and dramatically effective. Sometimes a composer might decide to depart from the home tonic and use the energy of the coda to find their way back again. Here's my favourite example of that, where Beethoven is in his home key at the end of the recap and then shoots himself in the foot. And then he shoots himself again. Apparently with a machine gun. And then he has to find his way back home again. So that, in total, is our sonata form, and it's one of the most brilliant ways to develop a musical argument, which great composers have been using for generations. I hope you enjoyed this video, and there will definitely be more like this coming up, as well as analyses of great pieces of classical and film music. So please do subscribe if you want to see more, and share this video if you like it. Thanks for watching.